Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today we're going to take a look at the net SHW LAN command within, in my case, Windows 7, but this would work uh, Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows uh, 2008. All those versions of Windows would uh, support these commands. Now just be a little warned, uh, forewarned that these commands are to be used uh, as an administrator. So you need either an elevated or equivalent privilege to do that. So here we go. I wrote a little batch file, which is simply a text file, if you've never done one before, of all the commands. And that way I don't have to type or mistype all these commands. And you can see them all there. So this is basically what we're going to do. We're going to do a command, then there's going to be a pause, and so on, and so on, and so on. So now all I have to do is basically type the name of that batch file, and off we go. So the first command, the first command is show drivers. And that's going to tell me about my, literally, the driver in my Wi-Fi for my Wi-Fi adapter which in this case is an Atheros and there's the actual model of that it tells me the date of the driver the version of the driver it tells me where the driver files are and this is extremely important when you're troubleshooting or baselining to make sure you know what version of drivers you have and in some cases where they are in case you have to muck around with them it tells you over here what they support B, G, and N in my case if you have some cards that were the uh, initial uh, 802.11n or draft and might not show up, just, just so you know that. And sometimes you have buggy drivers, and uh, N does not come up. The other thing is you've got this hosted network supported, yes, and that's so uh, I can actually do internet connection sharing, or I can share my Wi-Fi adapter if I like. And then these are all the authentication and ciphers supported by my adapter in infrastructure mode. Now the other thing is ad hoc mode. That's computer to computer without an access point. So you can see here is open and obviously WEP and WPA2. Next command. Now that we've got past the driver, we're going up to the interface. There's the interface right there. You can see again Atheros and the actual model of that card. And this is a GUID. The reason why this is important is sometimes you have software or analyzers. Some versions of Wireshark, for example, will not tell you that it's a wireless card or a Theros. It just tells you this big, long, cryptic bunch of stuff. And you've got to figure it out yourself. So this is a good way to correlate that information. And that way you know what card that is. There's the MAC address of my card. In this case, I am connected, and I'm connected to this network. So we'll go back to this command a little later on when we muck around just to see what happens. This is the MAC address of the access point that I'm connected to. And the reason why that's important is if you have more than one access point on your network for that same SSID, such as me, you'll see that these MAC addresses will point back to the actual access point that you're connected to. And it tells me that it's a G network and it's infrastructure. So even though I do support N, this access point only supports up to G, so that's good to know. I'm using WEP, good to know, not WPA or PA2. And in this case we have a signal uh, strength given to us as a percentage by Microsoft. In the past I've cited this RSSI value, which is a negative value, 0 being the best, strongest, 100 being the weakest. This is not that. This is a percentage. So Microsoft says it's 100%, which means it's great. So 0% would be bad. So it's the opposite of the RSSI. And in this case I'm connected to that 36 birch, which is the same profile name as the SSID, which in most cases that's what it is. So now that we've got past that, we're going to go to the filter section. Now, filters, first thing you want to do is see if you have any filters, because you might have them as part of a group policy. And it may be blocking certain type of SSIDs and, and that kind of thing. So you'd want to see what you're dealing with. In my case, I've got a nice clean slate, so I'm good. First thing I want to do is I want to show you how to block an SSID. So you've got an SSID called bad, and you don't want people connected to it. In some cases you work in a corporate building and downstairs you've got a coffee shop or you've got a uh, metro wide Wi-Fi. You don't want the employees connecting to that. So basically you just run this command and you block that SSID. In troubleshooting you might want to get people to go to a certain SSID. So you could do that as well. In this case you can see that this filter was added to the system successfully. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, do a workaround if you cannot find the ad hoc setting for your card. Now most people do not want ad hoc enabled. It's a big security risk. So if you can't find that, the other way to do it is just to do a filter and say, hey listen, permission deny all to ad hoc networks. So that's a good workaround. So now I cannot connect uh, to any ad hoc computers. There you go. 
Now, when I do my command show filters, you'll see that there's a block list on the system that were defined by the user, not a group policy. And there's the infrastructure and there's the ad hoc. Next command, we're going to delete what we put in. So now we've deleted that bad SSID and we've deleted the ad hoc networks. Now we see the filters um, are all nice and clean, back to where we started from. We'll move on to the next command. In this case, we're going to show the networks, and we want to show the networks. This is um, WLAN show networks mode BSSID. And what I'll do is I'll put all these commands on the actual YouTube description page, so you can just copy and paste them if you want to try them out. And you can see this SSI, this SSID is 36 Birch, and you can see there's two. See, there's two access points, and there's two MAC addresses, one for each access point. One is N, and one is G. And we know from the previous command that we were connected to the G network. And that is the MAC address of that previous one as well. So even though the N is at 100 and the G is at 100, for some reason my computer chose the G, not the N. So that's quite imperative to know if at work you have the same type of scenario. This SSID only has one access point. Next command is the WLAN disconnect, which basically just cut me off the wireless network. Now. If you want to check that out, you would do a NetSH WLAN show interfaces, and it would actually say uh, disconnected. Okay. Now, if we want to reconnect to it, we would do that NetSH WLAN, but this time we would actually connect to an SSID, minus 36 Birch. There's the name. And this is all based on the fact that you previously configured this profile, so I put the web key in and, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, So that, that's a good way of moving around the various profiles that you have already configured on your machine. Now we'll check that command out again, and you can see that I'm on 36 Birch, and I'm at 100%. There we go. We're back on that access point. That's G. My machine seems to love that guy. And that's just the way it is, so now I know. Next command. If you want to take your profile, 36 Birch, you can export it as an XML file. That way I can go from computer to computer and I can actually um, easily import my settings. The other way is you go through the GUI and copy this on a USB key and move around all that nonsense. This is just so much faster. So now if I export it, the next thing I'm going to want to do is actually import it. And there you go. I've just done it on the same machine, but this is the command that you would do on another machine. And again, you can call this anything you want. Okay, I just use the default names. The next command is that big long, see all that stuff that flew by? That is the other way of capturing everything that you've done. And this is the show all command. So what I'm going to do, oh, I guess my buffer's uh, not that big. The command was netsh, um, netsh wlan show all and when you do that it dumps everything all the all the settings all the radios all the ssids and the reason why that's extremely important is at the end of that you can pipe it to a text file so you'll have a copy of everything that you've had so hopefully that'll help you out troubleshooting or baselining or lab work uh, and that's it so have a good day bye for now